You're right, YouTube. It is Mr. Mean coming at you this fine Thursday afternoon. It's about almost 5 o'clock. Yeah, almost 5 o'clock, and I hope everyone is doing well. Today's RPG du jour is Cult Divinity Lost 2nd Edition, produced by Helmgast in, I think it's Sweden. I don't remember. Um... Or fourth edition core rules. Wow, I didn't know there were multiple editions. Um, so you can see, I got a couple of the books that the fine folks at uh, Helmgas sent me. A big shout out to Gabriel, uh, who is the intermediary, because I guess he's over here in the states, and he was kind enough to uh, give me a shout out. And he reached out to me and said, "Hey, uh, we'd like to know if you'd be interested in reviewing Cult Fourth Edition." And I said, "Sure." I said, "You know, it's not the normal type of game that I." review but it is somewhat of an indie press and it falls into the category and i remember the first edition uh, i was a big fan of it and i i still have it as a matter of fact um and then i have the version um that uh uh target ab did out uh, i can't remember there was a separate imprint but it was i believe it was part of target ab which is also out of sweden so anyway <clears throat> we got some things corrected you know and obviously you know disclaimer they sent me all of this stuff free. Um, I did not pay for any of this. Um, it, this was gratis from uh, Helmgast. So thank you guys so much. Um, but again, my reviews, my thoughts, and my opinions are my own. And they have no say in what I feel or say about this content. So with that being said, let's get the first thing out of the way. They sent me the whole kit and caboodle. They sent me the core rule book. Uh, this is the street version. Uh, they sent me the collector's edition of the GM book. They sent me the regular copy of the GM book. And then they sent me an adventure book. Um, Screams and Whispers. Uh, first of all, all, all books are hardback. They are gorgeous. They also sent me some... Uh, some cards, which it's kind of hard to see. They sent me some nice postcards, so um, I'm going to send that to a good friend of mine because I know he'll appreciate that because he remembers the game back in the day. Brian, that's a shout-out to you, brother. Uh, but anyway, hardback. Um, uh, all of the books have a nice uh, ribbon in them for page marking. Um, I'm going to tell you first and foremost, uh, disclaimer, this is not a kid's game. Don't be playing this or don't buy this and think that you're going to sit down and play it with your 12-year-olds. You're going to have some pissed off, angry parents at you. This is very much an adult-themed game. Now, my buddy Miguel over at the Red Room um, and his lovely wife Sylvia, they had some thoughts on the game. They're not particularly a very good fan. Um, I I'm not going to say what they said because... While I do agree with them, I don't. I don't think it's my place to to say that stuff. You can go read their review, uh, or their talk about the game. Um, what is this? This is a very mature game that explores some disturbing themes uh, that, if you're into, so this is basically personal horror. Uh, so much like Vampire Fifth Edition, uh, uh, much like Cthulhu can be very adult oriented. This is bar none an adult oriented game um, I want to get that very clear this is not something you buy your 16 year old kids uh, I don't care if they're very mature I don't think this is a game that kids should be playing I think you play this with your you know uh, 25 to 8 on up adult friends who are mature in their mindset and, and safe in their beliefs and their feelings about you know whatever it is that they may believe and or feel uh, this is about body horror um murder, you know, rape, any, any of the taboo subjects that you want, but it's for adults. This is not a kid's game. It is a, a role-playing game where we sit around and we tell a story, a, a horror story. And I think people are forgetting that aspect of it. And I've heard a lot, I've seen a lot and read a lot of complaints about, um, <clears throat> you know, the <clears throat> X card and talking about parameters and stuff and we're supposed to be adults. And I agree, but you, we're in a new age. You know, it's not, you got to remember in, in the early 80s, we had satanic panic. Uh, this game itself caused the satanic panic in Sweden. So you got to be aware that not everybody is, you know, liberal minded or open 
to personal horrors. I personally don't like horror. It's not my genre. I don't run Cthulhu. I don't even attempt to run Cthulhu. I don't even run Delta Green, and I like Delta Green. I think Delta Green's an awesome game. I've played it a few times. I've actually got to play the new version. I really like it. I I played Cult. I thought Cult was a great game. Now, this system uses uh, Powered by the Apocalypse, and you're you're one of two camps. You either love Powered by the Apocalypse, that's me, I love it, or you hate it. Um, I think these type of games lend themselves very well to storyteller games. Now, that being said, could we run this in Vampire? Could we run this in, you know, Wraith? You know, sure. We could tell the exact same kinds of story in Wraith as we're telling here. And whether you like it or not, the game is extremely well supported. The character sheet is beautiful. Um, character creation is uber simple. I mean, it's if you've played any Power by the Apocalypse game, you're 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 going to be playing in five minutes if that's what you want. If your GM has read the adventure and he's ready to go, and they've got a book of adventures, and to me, they're all well written. <clears throat> I don't subscribe to the theory of telling people what they should or shouldn't like. I firmly believe giving you all the tools to make that decision yourself. And then if you go, no, I don't, that's not for me, then that's fine. If you don't like dealing with rape, I, I think if you're dealing with a mature group of players, I personally don't, wouldn't put rape in any of my games, but I know GMs that have. And in certain contexts, for the purposes of a story, if everyone's on board with that, rationale, then it's perfectly fine in the context of storing it. How many books have we read where, you know, uh, a character gets raped or the village is killed and, you know, the orcs are running through there and raping and killing children and stuff. You know, that's the horrors of war. That's the personal horror. That's the author trying to drag you into the tragedy that is befalling the main character. Um, same thing with a role-playing game, except the difference is you're the main character and the GM is telling the story. So, Personal preferences aside, if you're not into that, then this is not the game for you. I don't think, you know, we need to necessarily say that people are woke or, or you know, left wing or right wing. Politics and all that shit doesn't come into play. It's a game. Play the game if you like it. Don't play the game if you don't like it. I don't see the need to necessarily bash a game on its merits of why the author decided to do what they did. Uh, the new Vampire 5th Edition, or whatever version it is, uh, before they handed it off, uh, I didn't like it because it had the whole X card thing in there. If you're playing vampire, you are killers. You are vampires. You prey on human people. Human are cattle. They are your food. Why do we need a paragraph in there that says, you know, safety and, and, and all that crap and sensitivity? We don't. You know what you're buying at face value when you read the front page of the book. And someone had posted something that said, well, you know, my kid was playing vampire and I, I finally decided to read to see what they were talking about. And I was, I was aghast and they pulled the book off the shelves because these people screamed that, you know, kids are reading this book. Well, you know what? You're a parent, raise your kids, be aware of what they're reading, what they're doing, you know, uh, you know, I, I, but I'm going to get off that rant before I get started because I'm I'm a little bit older than the average crowd and, and I just feel differently and I think you should take an active role in parenting your child and I'm going to leave it at that. This is a mature game. It is a beautiful game. The art in here is absolutely gorgeous. The production value is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I find nothing wrong with this book. I love how they do the character creation. I love how they, they explain the Powered by the Apocalypse rules. I think it was a good choice to go with the Powered by the Apocalypse rules. Um, oh, there's my there's my code for my PDF. Um, uh, the art follows this very dark tone. Um, as you can see, uh, we have some basic character classes. Uh, basically, you know, you would choose an option and then you go through, just like in Powered by the Apocalypse. It's a little different. Um... But the art, it, to me, is phenomenal. Um, you know, the broken. I mean, right here, you know, if you read this, it's very traumatizing. Not traumatizing, but it's... Um, As gazed in the abyss and escape with their minds in tatters. They could be a homeless person who subconsciously performs rituals of forgotten gods. The mental patient who becomes a test subject for experimental medications. Or the sinner who was physically dragged down into hell, yet somehow managed to escape back to the land of the living. 
I mean, this is dealing with dark themes. It's dealing with, I mean, you know, that there is not an image that most people are going to enjoy. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. I love, I love the way it looks and stuff, but it's a dark image and it may offend some people. So obviously when you read a game that's spelled cult with a K and it says divinity loss, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to kind of figure out that this may not be a game for a Puritan. You know, this may not be a game for your holy rollers. Uh, it could be though, because the whole thing is you're fighting personal demons and, and for lack of a, a, a proper word, the devil. Um, so I, I could see some religious people playing this game and really enjoying it. You know, it, it just depends on what your preferences preferences are and what your group is comfortable with. But the core rule book is hardback. It is, let's get an official page count here. Um, very well done, first of all. Uh, they, they don't have page numbers on the character sheets. Character sheets are really well done. Um, I think the last page of the book we are looking at... There's a full index. Uh, we are looking at 367 pages plus another uh, 10 or so pages for the index uh, and the character sheets. They have several different character sheets. Um, full color glossy. I mean, you know, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that it's not a game for kids, you know, so... But it's a game that explores personal horror. It's a game that it explores the you know the inner id and the things that disturb you. And not everybody's comfortable with that. You know, um, I'm not. I admit it right off the bat. I don't like you know dealing with that. I went overseas. I killed people. It's what my government asked me to do. And I believe in serving my country. And I did it. My father did it. My dad was a Korean veteran, Korean War veteran, and a Vietnam veteran. It, you know, it's my family has a long history of serving in the military, so I was not going to, and as the eldest son, I felt it was my job to serve in the military, and I did. Um, would I do it again? Yes, I wouldn't change. That's my beliefs. I'm not forcing them. I'm not saying that you have to send your oldest kid off to war or serve in the military. If that's not for you and that's not your beliefs, that's fine. It's part of the reason I went to war for this country is so that you could have that opinion if you so choose. But you know, same thing goes for these games. You have to make the choice. Is this the right game for you? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now, I'll probably never play this. Um, I don't like delving into that. The things that trigger my PTSD put me in a very foul mood and I take it out on my family and that's not fair to them. And that's my own mental demons that I have to deal with. I play role playing games to escape, to have fun, to, uh, you know, and I GM mostly because that's the part of the role playing that I enjoy you know i'm running warhammer fantasy right now it's a grim dark perilous world right but we focus more kind of on the humorous side i mean there's still some dark things and i play within the rules but i try to make it as fun as i can you know and i want the players to feel empowered into that they're th the things and the choices that they do matter um so and this is kind of that same kind of thing this is a game where your choices are going to matter one wrong step and you can go into the abyss and never come back um it's mature themes and if you know if that's your thing if you don't like powered by the apocalypse here's the thing cult i think it was second edition that was done by target or the subsidiary of target i want to say it was monolith uh, somebody put down in the doobly-doo if they remember uh in the show notes uh but uh the thing is the mechanics are just a vessel to tell a story uh, I've had full sessions of Pathfinder and um, Scum and Villainy where we never hardly even rolled dice, you know, because we were just so engrossed in telling the story. Powered by the Apocalypse is a system that for a storytelling game like this, I think is excellent. Do you want hard and fast? I mean, if you want to be a bum that's a murder hobo, then play D&D, &D, play Pathfinder. You don't need to play this, you know. You could if that's what your group... I mean, I guess... My point here is play what you like, do what you like within the realms of your group. If your group says, hey, man, we're not into, you know, rape, pillage, murder, then don't play those kind of games. You know, play Pony Finder, you know, uh, you know, My Little Pony Pathfinder. And that's perfectly acceptable. I've ran Pony Finder at, at a game store. And I tell you what, I had so much fun with these 8 to 12 year old kids. It wasn't even funny. It was hilarious. And we had a blast. 
So the material doesn't matter. What matters is everybody's at the table of the same mindset and they're enjoying themselves. So if you have a group of friends that you can sit down with and play this and tell a good engrossing story that maybe makes you reflect on yourself or just you have a good time, then this game has done its job because 99% of the time there's no bad games, there's bad GMs. You know you're forewarned what the material is, what it deals with, how it deals with it, and why it deals with it. It's up to you to pick up the book and run it. If if you, you don't buy this book, then you can't be offended, and there's no reason to be offended. So I, I saw a lot of heat and a lot of flack going out um, to it. I don't think it's a bad game. I think it's not the game for everybody. I think it, a lot of people don't like Powered by the Apocalypse, but a lot of people do. I'm one of them. I like Powered by the Apocalypse. I like that simple, easy rule system that dictates story over mechanics. Uh, and I think this is one of those games that will benefit from that because this is a deep, enriching story where you're going to learn things, you know. And if you get, there's some groups that really get into their character, you know. And if that you're that type of group and you get into that, and there's pre done adventures, and I skim through them. They all look pretty good, you know. So if you if you're not quite sure what to run, pick that up and run one of those adventures and read it and tweak it if you need to, or run it as is and see how your group jives with it. You can buy it as a PDF. You don't have to buy the physical book. You know, you can get any of these books in a PDF format. I will say, just as a caveat, when you buy the book, I'll cover up my code. You get the PDF code. You get a code with the book. So every book that they put out, you get a PDF copy. So, you know, if this is along the lines of a game that you enjoy or that you think you might enjoy um, and you want the physical copy as well as a PDF copy, then Cult may be worth looking at. If you like Powered by the Apocalypse, this is definitely going to be a, one of those games. If you like a more mature game, uh, you know, that deals with modern themes. Uh, you know, this is obviously a modern game. Um, and it's set, you know, there's two worlds. There's the waking world and then there's there's the divinity. Um, and you have to deal with that, you know, the dream. And, you know, everything is not hunky-dory. So I, I guess, like, I mean, there you go. <laughs> you know, that's a little creepy. So if you're into creepy, if you're into horror, if you're into body, you know, dysmorphia, then, you know, this will be this will be the game for you. Um, might even be therapeutic. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't tell you that. That's for you to decide. But what I will say is, if you want a game that is outside the norm, is not orcs, you know, raping and pillaging and slaughtering and you know murder hobos, you know, and fantasy swords and chainmail bikini, um, and you want a modern day suspense, horror, dark, 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 dark themed game that's mature content, this may be the game for you. And especially if you want a rules light game that, you know, you don't let the rules get in the way and you just want to focus on telling a scary story, you know, and you don't have to, you know, worry about anybody's triggers, pick up that adventure book, run one or two of those adventures in there. And if your group jives with it, then great, man. Have fun with it. That's all. This They're role-playing games. They're meant to be fun. And for those, whether you like it or not, they're very well supported. I mean, that the, the deluxe GM uh, cover is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, these books are absolutely gorgeous. Um, like I said, this is just the, it's just a reprint of that book right there. It's the, uh, that this is the... Uh, let me move it. It's heavy. <clears throat> this is the uh, GM book. So uh, the cult tarot. Oh, there's a tarot deck as well, which they did not send me. And that's okay. Cause I, like I said, I'm probably never going to play this, but I'm happy it's in my collection and they're beautiful books. Don't get me wrong. And I'm very grateful for home gas for sending it to me. Um, is it the game for me? No, I, I'm probably, I will never run this. I'll, I'll never play it because I, it's not my, I'm not into horror. I'm not into personal horror. I'm not into, you know, fantasy make-believe horror. But, I mean, Call of Cthulhu has been going for over 30 years. So people are into horror. I mean, where there's a, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So uh, this game goes into storytelling, atmosphere, reflection, and uh, 
is it says right here uh, beyond darkness and madness is meant for an adult audience you need cult divinity lost to use beyond darkness and madness and this is again hardback full color this is the same book as the black book with the two k's on the back but look at that cover the art is absolutely gorgeous in here and if you're into that weird you know different art you know and this one's got three ribbons in it by the way so really good for gms uh disturbing behaviors um you know, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah, there's a there's a chapter on safety and, you know, gaming at the table. And, you know, I, again, I can't stress this enough. You've got to be aware of your players and you've got to everybody's got to be on the same page. Um, you know, and if you're not into that, that's fine. You know, I, Miguel, I love you like a brother. I don't I don't know you. I've never met you. But you know, I know we have this very similar taste in games. And like you. I would probably prefer original cult over this, but I do like the Powered by the Apocalypse rule set. I, I think it works and for certain games. I think this is one of those games that it works with. Um, uh, do I need, you know, safety and do I need a chapter or a paragraph or a, a you know, sentence telling me how to be a safe gamer? No, I don't. But you know what? Some people do. And these guys felt it was important to put it in there because of the subject matter. And I don't fault them for that because I saw what happened to Vampire 5th Edition. They didn't put it in there and they released a book and some some jerky got a hold of it and said, Oh my God, my kid's reading this and bah, you know, it's two guys kissing in it. And I'm like, Oh my God, have you watched TV? You know, I mean, there's so many gay scenes on TV. If you're worried about what two guys kissing in a book because it's a picture then I suppose you don't let your kids watch TV either because there's so many, you know, gay scenes on TV now with all these different programs, you know. So anyway, I don't want to get on a rant, but this is a beautiful book. Hardback, full color, three bookmarks in it. Uh, let's see how many pages. We're sitting at 200, 293 pages as well. So very well done. GM Sourcebook players do not need this. This is really, if you're if you're thinking about going down this road to run this type of mature game, you need the GM's book because it's going to give you a lot of information on how to run this game. If you're a group, if you've talked to your group and you say, I want to play a game about personal horror and good versus evil and, you know, those things, you want this book. Um, but I, again, I can't stress it enough. You need to talk to your group. And, you know, if you as a GM may be into it, but your players won't. And then there's no easier way to offend people or turn new gamers off than running a game that nobody's into but you as the GM. And I've done that. And trust me, it's a horrible feeling. Uh, so then Screams and Whisper, again, three bookmarks because you may pick and choose parts from this. Um, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine adventures in here. And again, it says right on it, Screams and Whispers is meant for an adult audience. Uh, so uh, Screams and Whispers contains nine standalone scenarios for cult divinity lost. They follow a variation of themes and touch upon different genres of horror, all firmly rooted within the cult mythology. All scenarios are designed to be picked up and played. So... This is nine separate adventures that you can just pick up and run. So you can read a little bit of this adventure. You know, the book is not super huge. Again, hardback, 221 pages of goodness. And you've got your your character sheets. Um, I, I like the character sheets. I like the layout. I like the way it looks. Um, yeah, I, I can't say enough. I think Helmgast, as far as the physical aesthetics of the book... And the visual aesthetics, I think you knocked it out of the park. You made a superior product. Um, it was well supported on Kickstarter. Um, this game was backed by Kickstarter, and uh, it's gorgeous. Let me get the, the now. The GM book is exactly the same. It just has this cloth cover. So there's the back, um, and I think that looks amazing right there. And then there's the front. It's like cloth. You can see there's like another inlay in there it's textured and of course the red k for cult um and then if that's their symbol you know so it's the same exact book 291 pages or so yeah 291 291 pages 293 excuse me and it talks with the tarot cards and everything 
So that's pretty nice. They have their own separate deck of tarot cards, which you can purchase. So if you're into tarot cards and that's kind of your thing, this may be another reason to really get into this. But this is the GM book. I believe this is still available on their website. Um, like I said, it is gorgeous. Um, I'm very happy to have this in my collection. Like I said, will I ever run it? No, I probably won't, sadly. Oh, I did get... Um, they had... Um, on heavy card stock, not a GM screen, but it was to go with the adventures, um, like some buildings and generic layouts and stuff. And they were just uh, eight and a half by 11 card stock uh, printed, you know, with like a room, uh, uh, not a CAD drawing, but diagram or building schematics uh, and for the different adventures and stuff. So that's also, and then of course the tarot cards, which they didn't send me. And of course it's powered by the apocalypse. So all you need is 2D6 and you're good to go. Um, I don't really have any more to say about it, guys. It's uh, it's a very adult-oriented theme. I hate to disagree with Miguel, but I agree with him in the aspect that if you have Cult 2nd Edition, that's probably going to be good enough for you if you're not a Powered by the Apocalypse fan. If you are, then I think this is a worthwhile edition. Again, uh, like someone was saying on the Facebook post, if the uh, what we like to call the woke statements of people being offended or, you know, the disclaimer, you don't have to read that section. Just gloss right over it. Just go to the next section on how to create characters. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And, and keep on trucking. Um, it's a great thing of a book. You can skip the sections you don't want to read, especially a role playing game. It's, it's actually kind of encouraged. You know, if you know how to GM, you're not going to read the GMing section unless you want a refresher. So if that whole section on, you know, politics or personal beliefs and everything offends you, and I get it, I, it kind of offends me, to be honest. I don't want someone to tell me how to play my game. I want to run it the way I want to run it. But I get it. You know, they got to put that in there as a legal disclaimer. Do I agree with it? No, I don't. I don't think it belongs in our role-playing games. But unfortunately, in today's society, we have to post those things because... You know, a lot of these businesses are small press and it'll put them out of business if enough people get fired up about it and start boycotting it. And, you know, and everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon. So you just don't want to be they just did it to cover their ass. Whether you agree with it or not, that's fine. Um, like I said, you don't have to read that section when you get into that. You go, oh, wait a minute. Why are they talking about personal politics or, you know, personal beliefs? I don't need to know about it. Skip over it, you know. Go to the character creation and start reading from there. If you're the GM, read the setting, you know, read the, the mechanics that you need as a GM and move on. Um, I personally think they're beautiful books. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. I am very proud and happy to have them in my collection. Um, I don't think I'll ever get to play it. I, if, you know, if one of my friends that I feel is a decent enough GM said, hey, I want to run this for you, I, I'd probably turn it down because I'm at that point in my life where I'm not into that. When I was in my 20s, yeah, sure, that was awesome. I would I would totally be into a dark game like this. But I'm in my 50s, creeping up on my 60s. I'm not into, into that. That's just me. Your mileage may vary. I hope you found this um, informative. I will say, just because I didn't preface it before, the Cult Divinity uh, Lost World is our world. It's the modern-day world. Maybe a year or two in the future, maybe a year or two in the past, it doesn't really say. And the whole point is there's another world past the veil. And it's that where the bad things and the good things happen. It's not a game of complete, you know, oh, my God, it's so dark and Droomy, you're never gonna. There are positives, but the, the negatives far outweigh the positives, which is always how it is, right? The old saying goes, "You need three attaboys to to clear up one oh shit," right? So it's kind of the same way here. So just be aware, it's a modern day game. Um, they have rules in there for running it in Asia, you know, or like a Japanese theme. Where do you want to talk about a repressed society? Come on, uh, you know that kind of thing. So if that's if that again, if that's your cup of tea, if that's what you're into then make sure your group is into it. Make sure everybody is fully aware of what they're getting into and what they're going to play. And then have fun, man. That's what it's all about, getting your friends together, telling a cooperative story where mechanics are light and don't get in the way, and just have fun. That's what it's all about. So um, I can't say this is a buy uh, in anybody else's book. I can say in my book, I didn't buy it, so I'm happy I had it. Would I have bought it? On my own? No, probably not. Because like I said, I'm not into that genre of game. 
Am I happy it's in my collection? Yes, I'm ecstatic. I am very happy that Helmgast, and I hope they like this video and they approve it because I love what they did with it. Um, I don't agree with everything, uh, but I think overall it's it's a beautiful game, and just like any role playing game, you're gonna get whatever you're gonna get out of it, whatever you put into it. Um, you can make it the greatest game in the world, or it'll be the suckiest game. But you can't necessarily blame the game, especially if you got your eyes wide open and you go into it knowing what you're looking for. So I know that's a lot of uh, I, I danced around the uh, the subject matter. And I apologize, but I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want to not offend anybody, if that makes sense. Because, like I said, this is a very mature topic dealing with themes that a lot of people find offensive and or just taboo. So you got to be aware of that when you get into this game. But if that's your jam, if you're into that, this may be the game for you. So... You know, let me know what you think. Uh, do you have it? Were you a Kickstarter backer? Do you, you know, do you like the book? Do you, are you enjoying it? I want to know down in the doobly doo. Start a discussion. If you really want to talk about it, hit me up on Discord. I have a Discord channel. There will be a link in the doobly doo. Uh, and uh, as we always say, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Uh, we're trying to grow the channel. We're up to 1,300 subscribers, which is awesome. Thanks to all the meanies, which is what I call my followers. Uh, we have a very active Discord. So, like I said hit us up on the discord i'm also on paypal or um patreon uh it's five dollars a month i get you uh exclusive giveaways i i just sent out stickers to all my patreons i had some mr mean stickers made up and i sent those out to all my patreon members uh, you know five bucks a month gets you all of that plus a special designator on discord so everybody knows you're a patreon and you support mr mean and it gives you first dibs on any games that i run i will be running real soon the Pathfinder uh, beginner box and so if you're a Patreon member you get first dibs to play that so um, but I am going to allow people to make their own character out of what's supported in the beginner box so if you don't want to play any of the pregens you can make your own sorcerer you can make your own druid or whatever so uh, stay tuned for that that's coming soon there's actually an, an announcement up on the discord of uh, the uh, to find to find a game uh, my main discord channel is called mr mean speaks let's talk about rpgs like i said there's a link in the doobly-doo there's a link to my patreon five dollars a month get you all those goodies uh and of course i try to respond to every youtube video i try to respond to everybody who posts so without that everything is out of the way i hope you guys enjoyed this did it make sense let me know uh you know, it's 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 a touch, touchy subject. It's a book that not everybody's going to like. And I, I do expect this to be my least watched video um, because of the game, the subject matter. But hopefully you enjoy it for what it's worth and you glean the little something out of this. And maybe you, you're peaked enough if you're into that kind of thing. You go out and buy the book. If you did, tell them Mr. Mean sent you. Um, other than that, guys and gals, peace and hair grease. And as always... As always, love one another. There's enough hate in the world. Find the goodness in everybody because it's out there. And remember, Mr. Mean says, be nice. <laughs>